All right, students, welcome to Single Replacement Reaction Notes. I want to remind you that because this is a video notes, you could always pause the video if you need to take more time to process, such as write or think about what we're talking about. I encourage you to do that often. You can also scrub backwards if you need to review something or hear it again. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's the essential question. Why don't you please write this at the top of your page in a colored pen? How do you determine the products of a single replacement reaction? So we're talking about single replacement reactions. This is one of the five types of main reactions that we're learning about this year. We've already talked about the first three. There's composition, there's decomposition, there's double replacement, and now there's single replacement. The great thing is, is because we've already talked about double replacement, single replacement works on a very similar process. Um, in fact, it's, it's super similar. Let's take a look at single replacement reactions. So here's kind of the general trend. Over here on the left side, we have our reactants. We have a, a compound, so it's two elements that are stuck together to make a compound. And that's gonna react with a single element. So this is what makes it a single, repla re a single replacement reaction. Now that single element will replace one of those two elements in a compound. To determine which one it will replace, it all depends on charge. So this element will replace a similarly charged compound in this reaction. Now think about that, that's like a transfer of electrons is what we're doing here. This is what the driving force is for single replacement reactions. Now again, the results of this reaction depend on the charge. If this element here is negatively charged, it's going to replace the negative element in the compound, it's gonna attach itself to the positive and then that negative element in the compound is going to be off by itself. The other one is, is if it's positively charged. So if we have a positively charged element, that element's gonna go up front because it's gonna replace that other positive element and it's gonna be in that compound. Remember in compounds, positive elements always go first and negative elements always go second. So let's take a closer look at this and see some examples. Um, before we get there, I just wanna reiterate. Now these, this is kind of re uh, reiterating what I just said in the last slide, but there are two types of single replacement elements. One of them is where we replace a positive metal by a more reactive metal, and that's where we use something called the activity series. The other example is a replacement of a negative halogen, and halogens are the group 17 on the periodic table by another halogen. So we're gonna take a closer look at each of those types because there's specialized rules for each of them. Before we get going, let's talk about what the activity series is. If you haven't done so already, you might wanna pull out your periodic table. On the back of your periodic table is this thing called the activity series. It's a list of metals where the most reactive metal is on top and the least reactive metal is on bottom. And we're gonna need the activity series anytime we see a double or a single replacement reaction. In fact, you could write maybe on your periodic table on the activity series that this is meant for single replacement reactions and you shouldn't forget to look at it. So in a single replacement reaction, kind of the rule with the activity series here, a good thing to note is that any of the any of the metals that are higher, the more reactive metals will replace any of the metals that are lower, the least reactive metals. But the re the reverse of that will not work. So only the most reactive metals will replace the least reactive and not the other way around. And I'm gonna show you an example of this on the next slide. So I've got an example. So here we have an example. The first one, the top one is kind of all done for you. Uh, it's not balanced, which it's okay. We can kind of ignore that for, for now. But this first one up here is done. Let's take a look of how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pen and take a look. So here we have aluminum. Aluminum is our single element, dubbing this our single replacement reaction. Now this aluminum wants to play, replace one of these two things in this compound. And the one thing that makes the most sense is iron. Aluminum is a metal. Iron's a metal. They're both positively charged metals. And so aluminum's gonna try to replace iron. You can already see the outcome over here and you can see that it did work, but let's just make sure we understand why. If we look at this activity series over here, aluminum is found right there on the activity series. Now iron is below aluminum, meaning iron is less reactive than aluminum. Therefore, aluminum will indeed replace iron in this reaction and it will work. And so that's that's kind of how this works. Again, this reaction is not balanced, so we might need to go back and make sure things are balanced. So I think I would need to put a two there, a three there, and then I would need to put a two there and a three right over here. So it's kind of two, three, two, three. All right, 
I recommend now you try pausing this video and seeing if you can figure out this next one by yourself. So similar to the first one, and don't forget to use the activity series. Did you pause the video? Did you try it yourself? I really recommend that you do so and not just blast through to get the notes. The more practice, the better. But if you did, let's go ahead and get started. So here we have calcium sulfate and lead. And so again, I see lead is our single element. It's gonna to wanna to replace either calcium or sulfate. Lead is a metal, calcium is a metal. So therefore, lead is gonna to wanna to replace calcium, lead being positively charged and calcium being negative, or positively charged as well. So will this work? Will this uh, single replacement reaction happen? I gotta go find out where lead is on the periodic table. So lead is down here. Ooh, it's, it's pretty low in the reactivity series here. Uh, calcium, oh, it's super high. So in this reaction, calcium and lead, lead will not replace calcium because lead is lower on the activity series. It's less reactive. So this reaction will not occur. All right, let's take a look at the second type of single replacement reaction. In this case, we're not dealing with positive metals. We're gonna deal with the halogen group. If you haven't found it on the periodic table yet, the halogen group is group 17 on your periodic table. So we're dealing with things like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, those types of things. And so here I'm gonna take a look again. I'm gonna look, chlorine looks to be my single element in this single replacement reaction. Uh, reaction. <laughs> so chlorine here, notice it has a two at the bottom. Chlorine is diatomic. In fact, all of the halogens, when they're by themselves, are diatomic. And so chlorine is going to want to replace one of the elements in this compound over here. We have potassium bromide. And so potassium is a metal. Bromine is our halogen, if I look at that series, or if I look at the group 17. So chlorine is going to want to replace bromine. Now this is going to work. All halogens will replace other halogens. This isn't like the activity series. In fact, I don't need to look at the activity series here because halogens aren't part of that series. If you ever see a halogen, it will replace another halogen. So chlorine will replace bromine and it will be potassium chloride and then bromine. And again, notice that bromine has a two next to it because it's diatomic. And so we need to make sure that we balance this reaction. Formulas are not balanced by default. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a two here to make sure that chlorine is the same on both sides. And I'm gonna put a two here to make sure both the potassium and the bromines are, uh, are equal on both sides or balanced. Try pausing the video and seeing if you can figure out this next example. All right, let's go ahead and try this next, next example. Uh, whether you pause the video or not, or, again, I really recommend that you do just to make sure you can try to practice on your own two feet. All right, let's look. I see here that sodium and iodine are together, and I see here that fluorine is our single element, and it is a halogen. It is gone group 17. It's diatomic. So I'm going to go ahead, and I know that fluorine is going to want to replace this iodine, and it's going to work because we don't have to worry about the activity series. So I'm going to go ahead and show the results over here. So it's going to be sodium fluoride, and then iodine is by itself. And because iodine is also diatomic, it has a two. Last step, just to make sure everything is balanced. So I'm gonna put a two here and I'm gonna put a two there and we should be all good. All right, those are the two, all the things you need to know about single replacement reactions. You might wanna get out your practice now and go ahead and get started. Good luck guys.